And let's start with body awareness. Just check in with your body. Where do you feel some tension? <laughs> I, <don't. laughs> I think we officially lost Samantha about five minutes ago. <laughs> Your awareness is on your body. You're taking nice, long, slow, deep breaths. Move your awareness to your spine. You're taking nice, long, slow, deep breaths with your awareness on the spine. You can explore your spine or do the whole spine itself. Now move your awareness to the ajna, the area between your eyebrows. Your throat, your awareness is on your throat. Long, slow, deep breaths.
Just pause for a moment. Just pause and let it go for a moment. Again, inhaling again, your awareness is on the throat minor, which is the bottom of your throat. Think we're losing her. <laughs> Literally. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The awareness is on the bottom of the throat, that little notch between the two collarbones. You're taking nice long, slow, deep breaths. up to the jaws where they hinge in front of the ears. Your back heart, the area between the shoulder blades.
the front solar plexus, the area below your ribs and your upper abdomen. Your awareness is on your back solar plexus. And then just be still. Just be still, be aware. Notice your breath. Part, part of deepening the breath is for all these psychological or physiological and partially psychological reasons. But for those of you who do meditation, um, especially practices that involve sustained awareness, when the breath is slowed down, there starts to be this like inner, inner breathing that starts to happen that's different than your normal everyday breath. It's associated with very deep levels of stillness. And it's when uh, soul energy really, really mixes with your, your mind, your emotions, your body. Different traditions call this by different names. They usually don't teach it very much openly. But I've heard it called all kinds of things, soul breathing, the inner breath, the breath of the Holy Spirit. It's very, very healing. Yeah. You could say that, like, you know, you see in old traditions where you know, yogis would do things where they would stick needles through their mouth or through their hands or whatever. And then they would feel no pain, no reaction, and they pull them out. And then in a short amount of time, that area is healed. It's actually tied to this inner, inner spiritual breath. It's like your, your breath steps away from the part of the nervous system, the autonomic nervous system, and becomes controlled by the mind for, for very short periods of time. And, and it's very, very peaceful. 
the ones that do Lama yoga, sometimes that will happen when you're doing your Lama yoga. Um, even in the materialization breath that we do with the oils and things, sometimes that'll happen even there. There's a reason why I always kind of grind on the breath part. And the rate of healing, you could say, directly corresponds to where the breath is at. So let's do one more round. Begin inhaling. You're checking in with your body. Where do you just feel something in your body? Yeah. You're just chill. <laughs> <laughs> Move your awareness to the spine, spinal awareness. Your awareness is on your spine. You're taking nice, long, slow, deep breaths. Your Ajna, your awareness is on your Ajna. Long, slow, deep breaths.
Awareness is on your throat. The bottom of the throat, the throat minor, a little notch between the two collarbones. Your jaws, where they hinge in front of the ears. And they're going like this. The back heart. Your awareness is on the back heart. The front solar plexus, area below your ribs. And the back solar plexus, the mid back area. Excellent. And then just be still. Just be still, be aware. Notice your breath, notice your body, your emotions. 
Notice your thoughts. Why do you notice? Okay, let's go ahead and unmute and share, share experiences and feedback and ask questions. Unmute yourself or type in. Yeah, go ahead, Marianne. Hey, Marianne. Hi. Um, oh. For quite a while, I noticed a congestion in the back of my neck, my jaw. And I think all the work I had done prior to this exercise um, must have loosened up the congestion because for the very, very first time, as I was taking in deep breaths, it was like, there was a cool sensation that oh nice that yeah. went up the back of my neck yeah and into my at the base of my spine i mean my skull and into my head and it it was just so pleasantly oh my god cool and comforting yeah. and i've never never felt it like that wow very nice um, so I think the work in that area prior must have loosened something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, between the last two protocols, um, I mean, the next to last one definitely can contribute, but the one we just did, that heavily could contribute to what we're doing, uh, what, what happened for you, what we're doing. Yeah, good for you. It's great. Go ahead, Barbara, then Mara. Hey, Barbara. Wow. That felt like my breath my breathing was in an altered state. Yeah. Um, especially if you do meditation, the breath work will go even deeper. Um you know, if it's pretty wound up, like it, you know, you're unwinding it, unwinding it, the body shifts around, but um, definitely helps with meditative states and states of stillness and, you know. Yeah. It, it, it felt as though I couldn't alter my breath if I tried. It was just right. somewhere on its own. Yeah. And, um, and there starts to be you know, you see this more in meditation, but even with this practice, it can happen where your breath almost feels like it stops and you don't really have the need for oxygen. It's like, it's a weird thing. It's just, you know, you'll be doing it all of a sudden you're like, I don't think I've taken a breath for like two minutes. And it's not like holding your breath. It's not, not the same. There is some breathing happening but it's not your normal autonomic breathing you know it's, no, a, different, it was, it, it's a different kind of breath it know? was and I actually had to measure it at the end and it was about seven and a half cycles in a minute yeah yeah um well, good for you but it um just this beautiful stillness and yeah just love well very nice yeah, it was lovely. Thank you. Good, 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 good. And how, how's your neck doing, by the way? Um, that feels looser too. <laughs> good. Yeah. 
Thank you. And then go ahead, Laura, then Peggy. Hey, Laura. Hey, Greg. This kind of goes along with what Barbara was talking about. Um, you were talking about the um, the Lama Yoga and materialization mm -hmm. breath. Mm -hmm. um, are any of these your favorites to use with those hyssop myrtle? You know, I, I go through my moments. I, I got to say, um, I love me some Sitka. Like I, uh, I use hyssop a lot for this. Anula works really well. Um, my latest kick is I've been using March for this. It works equally as well. It's just, you know, mixing them up and um, frankincense is always good with that. Um, uh, like the Ami Visnaga and the frankincense, I tend to use like in a blend, you know, um, rather than like the bronchioles and unconscious has several of these all mixed in with it. Um, but I'd say my go-to ones are Sitka and Hyssop. Um, uh, Anula I use, and sometimes I don't even know why I step away from Anula because it is so, so relaxing and so deepening to the breath. But um, yeah, Larch I find, like sometimes it's hard for me to even have my brain make this connection, but Larch I find will deepen the breath, but it it has an impact on the on the motor nerves of the of the body, and um, it just like helps them to reboot a little bit. And it's not even that it's relaxing. I just feel like different sometimes. So uh, to say that it's for a specific therapeutic reason, I, I couldn't even tell you what that what that hits. And you but, would use that with the materialization or the Lama Yoga. Or you just use it? I, I just use it a lot to deepen the breath. But um, I, if I'm doing it for um, materialization breath, a lot of times I use hyssop. Like hyssop is a very good one to use for the materialization breath. Sitka I use because it deepens the breath, but it's also very soothing to the nerves. And um, larch is soothing to a different set of nerves, you know, is the best way I could say it. Frankincense, who doesn't love frankincense? I mean, we burn frankincense incense um, probably multiple times a day in the house um, or frankincense or myrrh, whichever one, but mostly frankincense. Um, but I like I like inhaling frankincense. I love putting a bunch of frankincense on the body. It just feels good. Like I feel like fortified in any, anything that's like an evergreen or real resiny, like when you put a decent amount of it on the body, it's very fortifying to the nerves. And so, um, you know, frankincense would fall in that and Sitka would fall in that. Larch would too, actually, now that I think about it. But, yeah. Thank you. And it, this this one doesn't have to be done on a daily basis. Like I, I do it from time to time. I don't even... You know, if my breath is filling off or I'm feeling a little wound up or, you know, I'll do it. But other than that, yeah. I, I remember putting someone, uh, Sitka, on my little nephew one time. And, you know, he's a little kid, like, you know, I don't know, seven or eight at the time. And when I put it on him, he goes, I don't have a thought in my head. And... You know, it's just like that's the impact of like deepening the breath and also fortifying those nerves like that. Yeah. And then go ahead, Peggy. Hey, Peggy. Hello, hello. So mm -hmm. I don't know if I pronounce this one right, the, the one that we utilize from the kit. How do you say it? Uh, Ami Visnaga. And can you tell me a little bit about that? Um, it's very good for when the breath is um, like restricted. Um, it, it will open up, it has a mucolytic, you know, an effect on mucus basically. But I find that um, when the Ami Visnaga is, is impactful, it's like the breath has been impacted by like stress, 
or some emotions or like a like a fascial restriction in and around the bronchioles. Um, I tried to use it in on pain syndromes and I, you know, because like if you have sharp stabbing pain, your bronchioles go into spasm. It's helpful for that, but like hyssop and other things work better and nula works better. Um, the omnivis naga hits that part of like going more into the unconscious a little bit. And so I, I use it a little bit more for wanting to take, like to regulate the breath, slow down the breath, to go into deeper states of the unconscious so that, you know, you can release something, process something, let go of something. And so um, it's it's a nice one. I, I usually only put it in blends. I mean, I, I, I don't talk about it too often by itself. When I use it, I use it by itself. Um, but um, yeah, sometimes they don't call it, a lot of times they call it, um, I'm trying to remember the nickname for pick tooth. They call it pick tooth. I guess it's like the the plant itself has like these little things that come off. It's almost like a toothpick. But, yeah. Thank you for that information. It all applies to a history that you well, gathered in your lifetime. Well, what what was um what was your experience with using? I was getting to that. I have been crying. My nose yeah. is running. It's yeah. like where where did that come from? What is that about? Yeah. I don't even have a well, conscious. Definitely will loosen up mucus that's impacted way way back in there. Like um, it will flush some things out. I do find it a little bit more cleansing to the mucus membranes of the respiratory tract than some of the other oils. Um, you know, they're all kind of cleansing, but like I'm talking about like fleshing out like irritants that are stuck on the mucous membrane. Um, but yeah, like um, emotions can come out that are being held back, you know, because sometimes our, our breath is short and rapid because if we take long, slow, deep breaths, we'll access those more unconscious uh feelings and you know you, you look at it there's like kind of pre-conscious there's subconscious and then even deeper there's unconscious pre-conscious are just the things that we can recall and tap into if we put our mind to it they're not just always there but if you think about it you go oh yeah 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 like i remember and then subconscious takes a lot more work unconscious you really have to play with the breath to get down into the unconscious and so um, I find that the Ami Visnaga is a little bit more fortifying to the spleen, which the spleen, when it's depleted, diminishes your ability to feel. You know, it, it diminishes somewhat in your, your mind's ability to process things, but more than anything, it diminishes your, your ability to feel something like good or bad even like love it's hard to feel it and so you deepen the breath it starts to strengthen the spleen and then kind of it just releases things you know you're having it in the moment but a lot of times it might be like um in in the nighttime you know i i i had some uh I used some yesterday before I went to bed and um, I had this weird dream <laughs> that I had an alligator and this alligator, like I was always afraid that it was going to bite me. And my best friend from high school had a snapping turtle and his was trying to bite him. And we were like trying to find this place to release it so that they could go out in the wild and live and be free. And I was like, there's a lot of psychological things all wrapped <laughs> into all that, you know, because it's the unconscious. And if you think about alligators, you, you know, you, you might be standing by the water and all of a sudden they drift up and all you see is the eyes. And then the next thing you know, they something's happening. And if you've ever been around a snapping turtle, uh, kind of similar, but like you think, oh, it's a turtle. And then they start snapping and you're like, yeah. Uh, and so, you know, it, it definitely represented lower nature, something in my unconscious. 
who knows what it was, but like it was all about trying to not have the alligator bite me and and then getting it into the water because it's like it was weird. I loved the alligator, but it was always going to bite me. And um, yeah, I still got to dissect that. But like that's the kind of stuff that comes out, like just weird things that your logical mind won't won't know what it is, but it's impacting you very deeply because it's in the unconscious. It still affects your motivations and your behaviors and your judgment and everything. But you can't go, oh, it's that. You know, it's just something that's in the dark room that doesn't have any light and you really can't see it. Well, I will do tonight this again before I go to bed to see how my dreams manifest. But it is... Uh... I've never used it, not consciously used it. It might have been in blends or something. It's in blends. And when it's in blends, it doesn't quite do like what <laughs> we're talking about with it by itself. But um, I always find it very clearing. And if I use it before I go to bed, like I'll have something in my dream and I might not ever know exactly what it is, but I notice like in a day or two, like I feel a little better. <laughs> like I, whatever it was, I feel... And so, you, you know, it was one of the ones that's in the kit that I thought, you know, most people aren't going to buy this, but it's such a good, like, release that, you know, we treat a lot of respiratory things in all these different manners. It's probably one that people haven't used very much. So I thought, let's throw that out there and just have it be part of somebody's repertoire. Well, I, it's going to be part of mine now. I've not, yeah. It's not like I don't have a million oils, but right, right. I, I now I think I have to have this one just because yeah. there's something there and maybe it is deep, unconscious. We all got it. Like there, there is nobody, like you go and talk to the Dalai Lama, he's got something down there. You know what I mean? Yeah. We all got it because we're in a body. And, yeah. um, you know, you can either make friends with it or you can run away from it or wrestle it. But well, maybe you I find the know. more that you just release it and let it go, it just, you know, because that, that was the thing about the alligator or the crocodile or whatever it was. It it wasn't bad. Like I, I wasn't having like a bad experience. I was just like holding the mouth going, oh, we got to hurry up before it bites me. But I was like, <laughs> oh, you know, we're just driving around town and then, oh, we found some water and then release it. And so it was just this almost like pleasant dream, but about something really weird. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you on so many levels. Thank yeah. you, guys. And on that note, great day today, guys. Yeah. Yeah. And, you, you know, I, I like this idea of the essentials where it's just kind of bread and butter things that you can do to feel good and and to accelerate the body's uh, healing process and we'll do a uh, probably another one for physical and one for psychological and one for esoteric you know over the next several months in the next you know three or four months and so um maybe we'll even try to do one in the next month or two, six weeks yeah go ahead barbara hey miss barbara Hey, thanks. I have a quick question. Mm -hmm. When we do awareness on the spine and you have us go section by section, you always start with the cervical spine and go down. Mm -hmm. Should you follow that direction if you're doing it? No, you it can go either way. way. Doesn't no, matter. No. Okay. No, um, a, a lot of times the place that we hold the most tension is usually either going to be in the neck or the low back. And so, unless there's like an injury or something like that, then, you know, it could be anywhere. But, um, you know, either start at the neck or at the lumbar and then, you know, go either direction. But the thing is like the, the head and the hips mimic each other. And, and so it's kind of good to hit the neck and the low back you know, you unwind everything, but, you know, those two spots, you really want to work like a little extra long because it's a way to like balance out how your head and your pelvis are aligned, you know, but like if your head's off like this, you know, and something shifted in the head and neck, it, you know, goes down the spine and then your hip is off the same way. So the thing with like in the old days with um, osteopathic approaches is you get in 
you release the base of the skull, you look at the neck a little bit, and then you go down to the hip and you look at the hip sockets and, and how the pelvis is sitting. And then everything in between becomes much easier to treat. And if you think about, like I've said this a few times, that when there's significant misalignments in the spine, it will throw off lymphatic function. But if the spine slips forward, it actually causes an auto, uh, auto, autoimmune issue. And so by treating the head and the pelvis, it is another way that you are supporting lymphatic function by going through and doing that. Thank you. Yeah. Can you take spike nard internally? If so, what are the benefits? Yeah, spike nard is very relaxing. It's very soothing, reduces stress, reduces the stress response. It will calm the breath down. Um, two, three drops should be good. Um, probably will induce sleep a little bit easier. Um, also reduces like fears and anxieties, things like that. Yeah. I feel like I'm standing straighter and grew an inch or two. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Any salt bath suggestions? Um. Yeah, I mean, you could do something out of the, out of the class. Um, you know, it depends on what itch issue you have. I would say, you know, maybe like a little frankincense or Sitka. Um, if you have larch and you're rocking the larch, do that. Um, ginger, a ginger bath could be good. Turmeric, if you have turmeric. Um Something nice and soothing. Yeah. 